With three of the Baltic leaders, uh, these are the leaders of Latvia, Estonia, and Lithuania. As soon as that begins, we'll, we'll obviously get right to it. Uh, all of this at a time where uh, the president is looking at uh, trying to talk about ways to continue to keep the economic improvements going here as his own poll numbers pick up a tad to Olympic managing uh, Olympic media managing editor Katie Freitas we've got National Taxpayers Union Free Trade Initiative Director Brian Riley and syndicated radio host Stacey Washington um, Stacey any with you begin with you on um, the president right now and his economic message which seems to be and I, I don't want to overstate it but seems to be showing up in his own poll numbers that are picking up a tad. Is that what's going on here? Do Republicans sense that they've got something that will pick up steam by the midterm elections? What? Well, you know, Neil, on the heels of the tax reform, you see the president going around to those Rust Belt states and making promises to people who've seen their industries completely destroyed by horrible policies from the previous administration. And so you have him actually stepping out ahead and doing things that even members of his own party don't like, like the trade war, quote unquote. Now, we've already been in a trade war for decades where we've been on the losing end, and President Trump is trying to reverse that. And so I think that's reflected in the poll numbers, and we're going to see even more of that as he continues to push this policy forward, regardless of what the members of the party, party leadership, regardless of what they say, he's striking out on behalf of those people he made promises to during the campaign. Uh, Brian, it doesn't uh, translate into getting full party support on some of the tough stance he's taken against Amazon or more to the point, uh, China on the, uh, the, the trade tit for tat we see getting a little more heated. Uh, what do you think? Well, I think this is just the equivalent of flat earth trade policy. You know, a week or two ago, we had somebody build his own rocket and launch himself to prove the earth was flat. <laughs> and it was entertaining, but we didn't hire him to be the head of NASA. And, and, and that's the equivalent of what we've got running trade policy in the United States. Look, we get richer, we can afford to buy more, and our trade deficit goes up. It's as simple as that. And I'm really concerned. That the president's trade advisor said, well, we can put these tariffs up and, and nobody else is going to retaliate. It took about 30 seconds for the retaliation list to start coming out. It's self-destructive trade policy. It might sound like we're getting tough on China or getting tough on Mexico. And by the way, you want to talk about immigration. Imagine what happens if we pull out of NAFTA. You can't build a wall high enough or fast enough. So we're getting tough on Americans. We need to promote more trade, more freedom, just like we did with regulatory reform and tax reform. And, and we're going the wrong direction on trade policy. You, you could argue that, Katie, but one of the things the president is banking on is that the Chinese will realize, in this case, they need us more than we need them. Their response has been fairly muted. I'm not saying that they're res we're not responding to the president, but they could have gone after other lucrative, uh, you know, agricultural uh, imports into their country from America, including soybeans. They didn't. Um, so it, there, there's a thought here that maybe the president will get his way and that this works. What do you think? Well, Neil, you're right. I mean, we have seen from foreign countries like China, like North Korea, like Russia, even peculiar responses to the stances and the means with which our president expresses himself. So who knows? I mean, I'm not a fan of the tariffs. I don't think they're good, going to be good for America. But at the same time, it seems that President Trump's particular way of negotiating, if you will, has had some unexpectedly good outcomes with foreign nations. So maybe China is being a little hesitant. I know that, of course, they want to. It's kind of, you know, China and Russia against the world, it seems like, more often than not. And I don't know if they're going to keep positioning that way, saying, hey, everyone else, we don't need America. You know, they're not the strongest anymore. Ally with us. Maybe they're going to turn around and say Trump is hitting us where it hurts and we're going to back off. But we'll see because they did impose their own tariffs. You're right. They didn't go for things like soybeans, though, but we'll see. Do any of you guys get an idea that these leaders uh, from these largely Baltic countries many of whom have been urging um, that the president do more to sort of send a signal to the Russians that they can't just storm into a country much as they did the Ukraine uh, and, and, and we'll just look the other way. What, what, do you, what do you think about that, Stace? I mean, I, I just think there's an entirely different demeanor going into what I've been calling the Trump doctrine. Obviously, we had the Obama doctrine. It took a little while to develop, and it was one of America posturing backwards for us to not be as strong, for us to, to basically let other people lead. 
in this instance, so they've already annexed Crimea, Russia has. Now they're looking at other Baltic states, and those Baltic states gathered together with the president today, and they made a very strong united front that that's not going to be something NATO's going to tolerate under the Trump administration. I think they are really taking a hard look at how they deal with a President Trump as opposed to how they dealt with Obama. And that's important. It's good for America. And it's also good for them to start being more responsible for their finances, which is another campaign promise that President uh, Trump made during the, the campaign. All right, guys, I'm running out of time here. I do appreciate your taking the time in this abbreviated format here as we wait to hear from these leaders meeting with the President of the United States. Here's the drill. Each will uh, you know, make a statement and respond to reports from their respective countries.